guys. Today we're going to paint in our great wave that we sketched out last week. And at this point you should have a drawing, a line drawing of your great wave that you've created. We're going to use watercolor paints today and I have a paint set here. I also have liquid watercolors in cups with um, water added into them. So what you're going to want to do um, is take your eyedropper or your paintbrush and you want to drop water into your paint set so that your paints can start to moisten. I'm going to use blues, I'm going to use greens, I might use a little violet and I'm probably going to use a little orange, yellow, maybe some red and I'm also going to add water to my liquid watercolors. You might not have liquid watercolors and if you don't have a watercolor paint set but you have food coloring they work very similar to liquid watercolor. So if you put some food coloring in some small cups, add some water to it, and voila, you'll have some watercolor paint. If you don't have watercolor paints, that's fine. You can use marker or colored pencil or crayons to color in your um, wave and just follow along and do uh, what we do in paint. You're gonna to wanna to have a paper plate to mix your colors. And I wanna to talk to you about lightening up your color because with watercolor, you use water to push the paint around. And um, you also use water to lighten up your color. So if you have white in your paint set, I'd rather you not use the white and try to just mix uh, greens and blue greens and blues and create lighter versions of those colors by adding more water. So the more water you add, the lighter your watercolor will be and the more paint you have the darker your watercolor will be so just like i have paint in my paper plate the more water i add the lighter that color becomes and that's for our lighter highlighted areas and then we'll go in with our um, darker pigment uh, watercolor for the dark shadowy areas okay let's get started the first thing you're going to want to do is gently stir your paints. Now that you've um, moistened them, you do not want to dig in the paint set. You just want to stir and then pull some of the paint out of your paint set and put it into your paper plate. All right. If you don't have a paper plate, you can also use uh, a plastic lid in your recycling bin. Just wash it off so it's not sticky or have food on it. And you want a big container of water so that you can rinse your brush. So you're going to put various different blues and some greens into your, onto your paper plate so that you can kind of mix them together and create your own aquas because blue and green make a blue green, which also is better known as teal or aqua. So you'll have different variations in your blues to use in your painting. We're going to start off just underneath the big wave and we're going to put the darkest colors in first okay so i'm going to do um some of it in real time and then the rest of it i'm going to do in a time lapse so i'm just going to show you how you can start painting in um, the first sections in your wave so i come in with my darkest color which means i don't have that much water i roll my brush so it comes to a point if you don't have a real skinny brush or tiny brush um, you could maybe use the Q-tip to put these darker colors in. So I'm going right up against my black outline. And at this point, you should have outlined your uh, painting with a black ultra fine Sharpie marker. If you don't have a really thin um, Sharpie marker or Micron pen, you're gonna want to just use um, your pencil and press really hard so that your outlines are nice and dark. Once I throw in some of this darker paint, because my wave curls over, it's gonna create a shadow, cast a shadow. My blue should be a little deeper, darker up and underneath here. I'm going to just take water. So I wanna rinse my brush and I wanna just take some water and I'm going to pull that paint down. And as I pull it down with more and more water, dipping my brush into some fresh water, bringing it down, it's, the color's gonna get lighter as I come down towards the bottom of this wave piece. And then I'm going to go back into my darker color and I'm gonna paint the bottom of this dark. And I'm just gonna let those colors kind of seep together. I'm not gonna keep brushing them. I want it to look darker at the top, lighter in the middle, and then darker again at the bottom. 
And as I go on, you're going to see where in some sections I'm going to mix different blues so everything doesn't look all the same. Okay, I might even add some green in there. So again, I'll start again, the top of the wave. And if I want to darken this, I can add some more. I can just blot it in and just let it run. Don't keep brushing. You don't want to have puddles on your paper. Notice I'm, my paper's not really wet. I'm not using too, too much paint. And when I use the water, I dip my brush. I wipe it so it's not dripping. And now my water is going to help pull and move my paint around. So it's watercolor and you move the paint with water. And then I'm going to go back into my dark color and come into the bottom again. So I'm going to do this for all of the wave pieces. So, um, so that I'm not just repeating myself over and over again, I'm going to do the rest of this in a time lapse and you can follow along with me. Okay. I'm also going to be adding some greens and some turquoise. So pay close attention to the way I change my colors. Okay, let's go. wave is complete we're going to go into painting Mount Fuji which we're just going to mix um, a brownish grayish color and then for the sky we're going to stick in the orange brownish orange family and um, before we do that we're going to put some very light blue highlights in the white part of the foam and we're going to do that by taking our blue and adding a lot of water to it to make a really, really pale blue, just to put some splashes of um, highlighted blue color into the white part of the wave. So we'll do that with a small detail brush and I'll just put in a time lapse. We're just going to add a lot of water to create a light blue. So artists use certain colors to create gray. If you don't have black, um, you, if you have black, you can add um, black to a lot of water and you'll create a gray. Um, I'm taking some orange and I'm mixing it with some of my blue because orange and blue are complements on the color wheel. They are across from one another on the color wheel and they make a really, they'll make a really nice brown. And then when I add a little violet to it, mix it together it's actually going to turn into a really awesome gray kind of like in the purple family and that's what I'm going to paint my Mount Fuji with so if you don't have a really small brush like this you might want to use a q-tip and just kind of paint it in and then I kind of paint it with lines and I let the lines dry for a little bit and then I can go back in. I can mix my, make my color a little bit darker while I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit. And I can then go back into the bottom and make the bottom of the, make the bottom of the mountain a little bit darker by using more paint and less water. And if it looks a little bit more brown now, that's perfectly fine. So and those colors will just kind of run together and I'm fine with that. And again, I can go back into the bottom a little bit more and make it even darker. And notice I just kind of let the colors run together. I'm not doing a lot of brushing 
Maybe I'll put a few more darks up here and let them run down. And just like so, leave it like that. The next thing I'm gonna do is going to paint in the um, sky and I'm gonna use like some reds and some oranges, but I'm gonna be muting it. Um, my water is really dirty at this point. So when I um, add that bluish water, it's, it's gonna kind of muddy up my color. And um, Hokusai used more of a brown for the background. He started actually darker and then he gradually got a little bit lighter at the top. So we're gonna try to do the same thing and see how it goes. So there you have it. We have two paintings of Hokusai's Great Wave. Um, each time you do it, you notice each time I do it, it looks a little different. They never look all the same, even though we're all painting from the same um, image. Each student's work will look different. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson on painting Hokusai's Great Wave, and um, I will see you in the next video. Okay, great. Have a great day. Bye.